Uh, just speaking to you as a man, Brian, one who hears lots of myths about your sexual appetite. Has is, is that in the past been the case? Yeah, big appetite, yeah. I think everyone's got a big appetite if they uh, allow themselves to have them. And, and I didn't see any reason not to allow myself. I didn't see a reason to censor it, actually. Mm -hmm. How has your sexual appetite changed as you've grown older? Has it changed? Yeah, well, unfortunately, appetite has consequences. <laughs> And I, I think awareness of consequences is what makes a difference. It's not that the appetite changes so much, but also I think because I think one thing that does happen as you get older probably, and as especially as you get older in the 90s, is that sex becomes more psychological and less, less actually physical. Of course. And, and psychological sex takes a lot longer. It's not as quick. <laughs> so the, the sheer number of partners is reduced. One of the other things that one can look at as a good cultural indicator is pornography. Oops. If you go into a, an American porno shop, it's all pink. Everything is pink. It's all close-ups of pink bits of people. But if you go into a French shop, first of all, there's a lot of lingerie involved in everything sort of whimsical underclothing, a lot of costumes, fantasy clothing, but also there are a lot of books that are not even photographic. They're, they're cartoon books, they're drawings. Mm. Oh. And in fact, one of the reasons I feel that Europe is a more mature culture is because of its styles of pornography, <laughs> as opposed to the American styles. Mm. The, only, the only American pornography that is, um, is as evolved is, is the sort of... Um, bizarre stuff, you know, the um, bondage stuff, some of that is quite interesting. The only one we've got in stock is Thursday afternoon. Oh yeah? Yeah, we've sold right out of... Uh, have you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen any of these? Um, no. Do you want to see any of these? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is going to stand up. We've got this video here by a video artist called Brian Eno. And essentially what you do uh, to see it in this correct format, you turn your television on the right side so you create a, a different shaped screen. And more or less what you're seeing now is what you're going to get for about 47 minutes, really. Would that be of any interest to you? If it maintained that one picture for all that time, I would find it a bit irritating. It wouldn't soothe you, relax you, inspire you? It would relax me, no, really, I don't think so. It's no. more relaxing than that. No, I don't know, really. Imagine the Chinese way of looking at pictures. You see, they don't have them on the walls. You put them up one day and then they sit for an hour or 30 minutes and look at them. Then they take them down. Yeah. Then they really see the pictures. Yeah. But we have them all the time and we never really, really look at them. Yeah. It's supposed to be seen in this video. Right? It's, it's kind of possibly meant to make you think about visual images and sound in a, in a different way to how we usually think. I mean, would that make you go, wow, I think about the world in a whole new way now. I see things in a different way from I've ever seen them before. Not really, no. It wouldn't inspire you, then. I'd have to watch all the video first. Well, when he does a video, this is pretty much what you get. You know, nothing much happens, basically, in a citizen sense. Not really. No, if it was maybe starving children, it would maybe be feet by spot, but yeah. Mm. Not just watching some little body. It just looks as if she's spaced out on the telly. I don't think I'll have it. Thanks. Okay, thanks very much. Why, why is karaoke positive then? I think because uh, it says to people, you can do something. You can yourself be entertaining. Um, you don't have to be, you don't have to just sit there and be a member of the audience. There are turfs, there are fools, there are lockers, there in schools, then there was you. Then there was you. I burn my fingers, burn my toes, burn my uncle, burn his books, burn his shoes, cook the leather, put it on me. Does it fit me? Or was it you? It looks tight on you. Is that going to be in the program? Let's hope not. Oh, okay, let's go over to Les Dennis, who's got a new impersonation at last. It's Harold Brodkey. Responding to accusations that Brian Eno was a cold and unemotional man, his brother Roger said that in fact they came from a very emotional family. He said, well, our father, he used to cry at Lassie films. My mother did say to me, when I was quite well into my career, um, 
Do, do you think you'll ever get a real job? So, oh, really? Yes. I was, I was already fairly advanced in my career by then. So, but I think what, she likes what, what I do. What, what did she imagine you would become? She wanted me to work in the post office. Job for life. Well, it's a job in the communications industry, isn't it? <laughs> it's not that big a shift. Really. Yeah, well, right. My dad was a postman, you see. And my grandfather. A big line of postmen. Yeah, we, we come from a long line, yeah. Why would the postman be just important thing in your mind? I don't know. Is it, I guess it's a hereditary it's a thing job. to hunt down, isn't it? Mm. But it's a nice job in a small town. Because everyone knows you. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favourite sentences you delivered it to me. It's a nice <laughs> job in a small town. <laughs> Yeah. Sort of like a Lou Reed line, doesn't it? That's, that is a good line, yeah. yeah it's very good. Or, or a David Byrne line, yeah. I got a nice job in a small town. <laughs> so, um, should we do an interview then, Bob? <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> get your questions out and we'll start. Well, maybe we've done it already. Uh huh. What, the interview? I think we might have done it already. Oh, I see, yeah. Yes, I see, right. You mean I've, <laughs> I've said enough sound bites for you to string together some feeble excuse for a program? If you say so. Anyway, on tomorrow's show, we've got um, writer Richard Walty coming back with some of his everyday philosophical questions. And, oh, because it's not that time of the year, the lady who puts the little plastic robins on the Christmas cake will be popping in all the time this year. So you agree to do it then? Yes. I've, I've already agreed. Oh, you have? Oh, good. But d does that mean we stop now? Not necessarily. I was thinking, isn't it funny that television never really examines people closely? It, it always tries to examine them closely psychologically, but it never does what it could do extremely well, which is to examine them closely physically. You know, like mm. people's eyebrows have always interested me. I was having a conversation with a woman yesterday who had huge eyebrows, like Dennis Healy almost, and I was so...